Yeah, yeah, you're not going to gain baseball analogies today. I don't think anybody can score that much. Hey, Jim, I don't know if you saw Peter King's thing about uh, he was with the Saints, I guess, Saturday night, and Sean Payton's message was they were going to target Sidney early that they didn't think he would hold up, and he didn't hold up. Uh, how does that – what's your take on that? How do you uh, feel about that? Well, I think that's something that – that probably doesn't get reported a lot because reporters don't get embedded with um, offense and defensive and special team staffs. But I think, yeah, yeah, I think that um, I think it's I, that stuff that goes on all the time. You know, we talk about um, you know having different guys that we want to isolate in pass protection or different guys in coverage, maybe that are coming off an injury. Um, you know, a tight end coming off an injury, they're going to use this guy to block, but probably not to um, to receive. I think it's probably a little bit overblown um, because it just goes on all the time. You know, they tested a guy that was coming back from an injury, I think. I mean, I, that, that's, really, that's really not a surprise to, you know. Uh, to hold up? Well, in that game, he, he didn't hold up. I mean, I can't speak on um, anything more than that game. Played some good football for us early in the year. Got his hamstring. Um, tried to come back and be available for his team. It didn't work out. What's the most disappointing thing about Sunday to you? The run game. Uh, we knew we were going to have challenges in coverage. We knew it was tough to get turnovers. We knew it was tough to, um, to get sacks. Um, but we put ourselves um, scheme-wise in position to stop the run, and we didn't get that done for a second week in a row. I think that's uh, that's the most disappointing thing that comes that came out of it. With the ends getting too far upfield and they're attacking those guys. Yeah, you know, I think that anytime you talk about the run game, you you have to talk about all three levels. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know there was there were some that you can attribute to D line techniques. There were some you can attribute to linebacker techniques. There's some you can attribute to missed tackles, and we had one. I mean, it was it was a it was a difficult situation, but we had one where we had some guys get on the field that didn't communicate, and all of a sudden we just let a guy walk into the end zone when we should have a guy sitting right there. Now, again, sometimes you miss tackles, but we shouldn't have those miscommunications go. We'll, uh, you know, we'll sort of cover it up with a couple different guys, probably similar to where we did in the opener. You know, Nate Gary's a uh, guy that we trust, um, has played some good football for us, particularly in the opener. and. He's had some challenges with injuries and stuff like that, but he's back, and um, you know we'll probably get him a role. Um, you know, Kamu, um, Leroy. We have a lot of different guys that that filled roles when Nigel was out in the opener, and uh, we're going to need him. In Nigel's case, he had such a good year last year. What kind of season has he had in this year? Um, four and six. Yeah, you know, injuries are a funny thing. You know, I mean, you can never plan for them. You have to, uh, you have to react to them. And sometimes they go in strings like that. I had a year in Tennessee that late in the season, I think we had two defensive starters left out of 11. Um, you know, those are challenging situations. But you know, I mean, you, you don't, you don't get any, uh, you don't get any. But they don't start you with extra points in the beginning of the game, and you don't get any gold stars for performing, um, you know, with with fill-in players or backup players. Just like you don't get any, you know, nobody grades you on a curve if you stay 100% healthy. Um, it just is what it is. It can be challenging at times, but um, that's our job. How have Corey and Tim handled all of those injuries? Four and six. So how do you react in this situation when you're working with so many pieces that weren't here since season? Um, I mean, you just you just have to handle it as it as it comes up. Every case is a little bit different. You know, some guys that might not have been here, um, you know, like uh, like Cravon, um, new on campus. Um, other guys like uh, Bosby been around for two years. Um, other guys like Sully or you know rookies that um, you know it was really their first chance of playing. Really, Cowboys fourth quarter, and the, and then that's so everyone's everyone's a little bit different. Um, you know, you just have to every week just sort of take what you have and try to find out the best way you think you can uh, you can perform and win that game, and that's our challenge. We didn't do a good enough job against that against the Saints. I mean, in any fashion. Did we see scoring? Communication uh, 
is that the most difficult part when you have so many moving parts on the back end? I mean, Chandon, I think at the end of the game, Chandon got brought up October 25th. He was the longest tenured cornerback on the roster. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, <laughs> Um, nah, I mean, I think you add it all together. Um, communication can be a little challenging. I mean, there, there is something to all of that training camp practice and all the off-season practice and the practice we do during the week. There's so many calls that we make, and you, know, you guys probably aren't privy to it. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of things, calls that you make when you're an offensive lineman based on a front or when you're a secondary um, player based on a formation. And coaches, you have those layers. OK, hey, we're going to make this call versus this formation that gives us this adjustment. In real life, that call doesn't get made very often because you get tempo, you get guys on the ball, and you just have to have unspoken communication because everybody knows, well, yeah, um, you know, th that's, that's what that is. I had a player one time, and this is way, this is way off uh, limit. But like in the middle of the game, forgot the, uh, forgot the call and said, hey, alert that, which I'm call it right there. And everybody was like, "Yeah, okay." I mean, they they all just they all just sort of knew, you know, what the what the situation was. But um, I mean, there, there's no excuses in that. I mean, communication is part of football, just like tackling and blocking, and uh, that's something that um, you know we we have to be able to perform and we have to be able to get accomplished during the game. Do you have a follow? With, uh, with scoring at, at an all-time rate, I mean, last night being a perfect example, is that changing the way? You guys have to like just do things differently now, defense, to to um, adapt to the fact that every time some of these top offenses get on the field, there's an opportunity that they're going to quick strike and score every time they touch the ball. Um, I don't know the answer to that because every game's different. I mean, you know, look at uh, last year um, when we had a playoff run. Um, we had a fairly low-scoring defensive struggle in the Falcons game. And then came back two weeks later or three weeks later, whatever it was, and had a shootout in the Super Bowl. So I think you just need to be prepared. I think, I think every game's a little bit different. And, and I would certainly classify the uh, Falcons as a high-scoring offense. I mean, they've traditionally been over the last three years and had a lot of weapons. That was just the way that game sort of went. And we were able to win a fairly low-scoring defensive battle. And then next week, or next week, everything sort of hit on all cylinders. And then the next week um, after that, it was it was tough to stop anybody on offense or defense on both sides of the ball, um, you know. So I don't think I don't think it's a, a trend that's going to be every single game, but there are some games that um, that are going to be that way. In what ways are the uh, the struggles on offense impacting you guys? Oh, we, we have plenty and plenty to worry about on defense, and and I think our biggest thing is is uh, controlling the run game. And if we can do that, then that can go a long way to solving a lot of our problems on defense. Is, is, is the pass rush doing enough to help out the guys in the secondary? Like, are they putting enough pressure on the quarterback? Well, in this game, I think there, there's a big difference between pressure and sacking the quarterback. And if you're asking to get a half a dozen sacks against Drew Brees, that's probably not going to happen. It hasn't. It hasn't happened. It's, he's very, he's very tough to um, sack. Probably one of our best um, packages in that last game was a three-man pass rush. And you know me, I mean, I'd, I'd on, rather eat a lot of vegetables than go to a three-man pass rush. I mean, that's bad medicine. But it was necessary in that game. And, that, and the few stops that we got, um, you know, those were, those were uh, three-man pass rush. And it's hard to ask, you know, those guys, you, you get chipped on one side, um, and then another guy's getting doubled, another guy's getting doubled. But that's what we had to do coverage-wise. Um, to go. Our guys aren't selfish that way. They know that the key is getting stops, um, however you're doing it. Um, you know, we, we need, we need to get, we need to get more stops. Why was it necessary to pass rush? Why does that? Well, we just talked about our secondary a little while before that and, you know, the passing game and everything else. And, and we didn't blitz a ton in that game, um, but the times we did mm -hmm. blitz, we had the blitzes were, I guess you'd say, successful in getting free guys. But the ball was gone before the blitzer could even uh, could even get there. The ball was coming out, so you could you could bring you could bring seven or you could bring three, and the ball was coming out pretty much around the same time. Yeah, there, there was an early third down. Um, it seemed like the linebackers got too deep behind the sticks. Thomas caught it underneath and had all had a lot of room to get the first down there. What could have been done differently to stop that? Because typically. Yeah, I mean, there was a guy. There was a guy behind the linebackers, and if the linebackers had been up on that, then 
you would have been saying how come the linebackers were jumping up. Yeah, I mean, well, we'd, we'd like to stop them all, but. Um, so the technique wasn't the issue. Execution wasn't the issue there. No, I mean, we got to break a little bit faster, but it's it's close to the sticks. I mean, that's sort of the price. I mean, we didn't play a ton of zone in the, in that game, for a lot of that reason. Um, you know, they were extremely efficient against zone. We played a lot more man than we've played since I've been here. And one of the reasons is, is, um, is he's so good at taking what the defense gives and they're, they're such good run after the catch guys that, um, that may play is like that difficult. But uh, that was, I mean, that's easy to see on film with those guys with, uh, with zone. Jim, when you have so many guys who haven't played a lot of football and they're out there against the Hall of Famer, during the game, after the game, is there anything you guys do uh, to uh, do you worry about their confidence? Do you worry about I mean they're they're in a really difficult situation and after the game during the week, what do you, what do you say to them to kind of keep them up? Uh, you don't need to. This is, this is the NFL. Everybody's competitive, and um, you know we're a, we're a pay to perform league, and it doesn't matter if you're brought up from the practice squad or you're a returning Pro Bowl player. Everybody's in the same boat. Those guys are resilient. They're competitive. Um, we don't need to. Uh, we don't need to pat anybody on the back or rub anybody's shoulders. You uh, mentioned uh, tempo earlier. Is there any uh, substitute for experience then? You know, when you're dealing with all these new guys, and um, just they, they have to go through it. They have to take um, it yeah, yeah, I think everybody's a little bit different. Um, you know, and, and just where they come from with experience. Um, you know, Avante. I'll give you an example, and that, and that that was a that was another one that really hurt us. Avante going out on our corner situation was well documented, but Avante at the safety has played really good football for us. And just thinking back to our earlier game against the Giants, his ability to go in that game, play safety and nickel was huge in, in getting us to win. But um, you know, he's a guy that uh, is is a really quick communicator, a really quick thinker that maybe not need as many reps as, as some other guys. Um, you know, so experience experience is, is different across the board. You get better with just about everything you do when it comes to experience. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys have some articles you wrote when you were first starting out that you look at now and you're like, damn, I, I could have done a little bit better than that. And I think players are no different, coaches are no different. Um, but everybody's everybody's a little bit different, and the challenges of the offense are a little bit different. The, the Saints run a lot of different personnel packages in and out of Wildcat, a lot of different layers to communicate, a lot of different tempos coming out of the huddle, um, a lot of different substitutions. There were some late substitutions that um, you know try to cut you off of your defensive communication. So it was a, it was a little bit more challenging for those guys. But again, um, I, there, there's. I mean, that, that's part of the NFL. It's something we have to deal with. How do you go about balancing um, calling the game you normally like to call it the way you like to call it versus helping a position group that is inexperienced and, and might need more help? Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean I'd, I'd probably like to, to blitz eight guys on every play, but just know what's best for the defense and how to best manage the game. You know that's probably not the best course of action. Every every game's different. It's it's really hard to to put that in any kind of a neat little package. Um, every game you're managing something. You know, you're managing a, a guy being out. You're managing a, a tough matchup. You're managing you're managing, um, you know, uh, a, a, the the way the offense is playing or the way special teams are playing. Every one is is different when it comes to how you're trying to get stops and how you're trying to how you're trying to play the game. In regards to the linebacker position, um, they haven't produced many big plays and turnovers, and I know they even mentioned previously that you don't want to chase turnovers; you might give up big plays. But the nature of the position is that they're around the ball a lot. Do you view that position sort of as a as a playmaker type of position? Yeah, you know, the, the, when I speak for turnovers, I, I think it all goes together. And, and again, I, I'm speaking because I'm watching a lot of Giants right now. And uh, I think second play of that game, Jordan tipped the ball. Kamu intercepted it. Um, you know, Kamu had his hands on the ball um, with, a, with a little soft cast on his thumb, but had his hands on the ball a couple weeks ago with the chance to, to go convert. I think you got to let those plays come to you. I think that's sort of where we are defensively also. You guys know I always talk about you know points allowed and uh, and then turnovers, and um, you know obviously last game we weren't uh, we weren't good on either of those. Um, I did think we had a couple chances to make some interceptions in that game, 
We just didn't make the play. There was there was a couple times where, you know, when the ball was thrown based on the coverage, it was like, okay, this one's going. I'm not talking about the linebackers, but there were a couple times that we we had a chance to get stops and um, or get takeaways and didn't really happen for us. Jim, Jim, speaking of the linebackers, uh, as thin as you got in the back on the back side and having trouble with the run game, did you consider doing more base or did Drew Brees just take that thought right out of your head? Oh, no. I mean, yeah, you try to play base against um, against some of the three. I mean, and Kamara is a wide receiver. So a lot of times there was like five wide receivers on the field. Um, yeah, it's a tough matchup. It's a tough matchup for base unless you're just playing spot drop zone. And um, I don't know if that's a great, uh, if that's a, if it's a great long-term strategy um, against their offense either. What do you say from the Giants' championship statement? Um, you know, since we played them last, they had a bye, and then they've come back with a couple wins. Um, they're leaning more, and we probably we probably opened this box, but they're leaning more on Barkley. Um, you know, not only not only catching the ball, which he was early in the season, but uh, but running the ball and really pounding it on inside runs. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest difference. Um, you know, they got Ingram back, but even even getting him back, they've still gotten a lot of just two back sets, two tight end sets, and um, and tried to be a little bit more of a, a power running team. And you know, quite honestly, that's what I would do against us right now. So uh, we're going to, have to be ready for it. All right. Thanks, guys.
Yes. When you go through the film of, of Sunday, uh, is there any one thing that kind of sticks out the most that bothered you the most? Um, shoot, I wish it was one thing. You know, there are a lot of things that, uh, as, as a coach, that bother you about the way that we performed on Sunday. And um, we know that we need to do a lot better than that. There were a few times where, uh, I mean, one in particular was the Saints of mine, when uh, you only had 10 guys on the field. And there's another time where Jordan is yelling to, I believe it was Nelson, uh, to get off the field. It just seemed like there were a number of times where the offense wasn't lining up properly or getting set. How does that happen, I guess, this late in the season? Right. We had, I think we had one or two times um, where there's miscommunication in terms of the personnel getting in and out of the game. And um, I'll take responsibility for that. It should not happen. We have new, you know, we have um, a new guy and we're trying to introduce, uh, you know, some different personnel groups. But uh, again, ultimately, that, that's my responsibility to make sure the communication is clean on that. You mentioned the new guy, you mean Tate? Yes. Yeah, you mentioned the new guy, Tate. Has it been a little more difficult to fit him into the offense um, than you guys might have anticipated? Uh, I don't know if it's been more difficult, but it's been it's been challenging um, to integrate them, and um, you know certainly w with with the way that uh, we weren't able to stay on the field the other day and um, find any rhythm to the offense, uh, you know that part of it, you know then then everything becomes a little bit disjointed. So um, if we can do a better job of, of uh, staying on the field and, and having drives, and you know everybody gets gets more involved in the offense. He said that in those situations where Carson is maybe spiraling a little bit, he can't try to do too much. What were you seeing out of Carson lately? Well, I mean, offensively, obviously, we you know we were struggling as a unit. It wasn't just simply Carson, and um, we all know that uh, you know Carson's extremely accountable, and he takes a lot of this on on his shoulders, and uh, and feels responsible, you know, for uh, you know really probably more than than he needs to. And we're we're in this together. And, um, you know, we all got to do our part, and that's, that's everybody. And um, so, when, you know, when that happens, you just got to try to find a completion and, and get yourself back in, into the rhythm of the game. Hunt, did you find him taking um, what the defense gave or did you feel like maybe there were a few times where he forced it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you could nitpick any, any, any play. I mean, um, even there's times when you do get completions, there's, you know, well, the ball could have gone here or there. So. Um, you know those kinds of things that you know. Um, if we don't if we don't get a completion, it's it's easy to point out. But um, you know we we knew we were we were in for a challenge uh, going down there, and and uh, we have to you know we got to perform better. Mike, there's been a lot of focus uh, obviously on the fact that the offense isn't as productive as it was last season, and that Frank Reich is doing such a good job in, in Indianapolis. Uh, how do you feel about that? Are you doing as good a job as Frank did running the offense? Well, I'll let everybody else make that evaluation, but um, certainly excited for Frank and the success that they're having in Indy. Doug said yesterday that he spoke to you about getting Nelson more involved in the offense, but he's playing like 90% of the snaps. Is it just that you're not using him properly in his role, or are you trying to just kind of figure out how you can utilize him with Tate in the offense? Yeah, I think, um, you know, roles changed. Uh, a couple weeks ago, so uh, again, I'm trying to find a, you know a rhythm with the substitutions and getting guys in in the right spots, and um, you know we're and, and you know we haven't done a good job with it, you know in the last two weeks or good enough to get the results that we want. You guys, in the film, is Carson getting the ball out quick enough? Uh, yeah, I think I think there's times where you know he's getting it out uh, on time and. Um, there's other times where, uh, you know, he may be a, a click later. We, we get edged in protection. He's got to move, and he's forced to hold the ball. And I mean, you, you know how it goes. So, um, yeah, he's trying to stay within the rhythm of the offense. In general, when, when you are reviewing the game, uh, what's, what's your process? How many times do you go through it? What, what do you watch for? Uh, well, I try to watch everybody. Obviously, assignment, um, and then um, you know, you're looking at you know, evaluating the, the plays and. You know, do we have the right plan? And to watch it, you know, multiple times uh, every week. So, um, not not a fun watch this week. This seems like a, a broad, simple question, but from where you're sitting as offensive coordinator, how does a team with with Carson at, at, at quarterback and the weapons you have score 
20 points per game and, and seven points last week? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, we haven't gotten the production that we want. Uh, everybody's talked about it. It's documented. We haven't gotten off to the starts that we want in, in, in the games. And uh, we haven't been as efficient in the red zone uh, as we were. Um, you know, and every, everybody uh, compares us to last year. Every season's new. Um, you know, every team is different. And um, right now, uh, we all know and, and, and that we have to do better. And if the season's going to turn around, then we've got to get these things fixed. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, when you know Golden's in, then you know Nelson may be doing something different than um, what what he is being asked to do before. In some cases, some cases doing the same thing. It's just um, trying to you know fit those pieces together. You guys had that uh, key third down uh, in the second quarter. Uh, up the sack. After the game, I think Doug said he thought we just got beat one-on-one. -on -one. Watching the film, was that it, or was there kind of um, an error in communication with the protection? Uh, it was a miscommunication uh, with the protection. Doug said that he thought about going for it on that first fourth down of the game when you guys were, were backed up. Did you guys talk about that possibility during the game? During, you know, in, the, in that moment, we did not. No. Mike, have you found, have you found in, in um, this season that it's been much more of a struggle to integrate new plays into the offense or to use the old ones and maybe defenses are kind of catching up in knowing those plays? I don't, I don't know if, if defenses are catching up. Offenses have systems, and um, when there's continuity, uh, then, you, you know, you have the ability to, to build on a foundation. And so from, you know, from that standpoint, maybe we haven't had the same continuity uh, you know, at a skill position, you know, um, that maybe we had last year. So, um, but I, I don't, I don't get that sense if, if you're, if you're going in that direction that people are all over our system. I talked last year a lot about the meetings you would have with Frank right the day before the game, like three hours on Saturday night. I'm curious, what does the, the night before a game look like for you? It's, we're in the same routine as coach was in last year with coach, coach Wright. Yeah. Three hours, I don't think is accurate. I mean, but they, we, we meet. And I don't think Frank ever met with coaches for three hours because it's a, it's a set window of time. It's about an hour that we meet on Saturday before the team meeting. As a former quarterback, um, um, you know, every quarterback at every level presses at times when the offense isn't going as well as they, they probably think. So it, it's a fine line, but how do, you, how do you stop from trying to do that, trying to do too much as a quarterback? Yeah, I think you just got to try to find a layup and uh, get yourself into a rhythm, a lot like a shooter. You know, when you're not hitting shots, how do you get into the game? Uh, find other ways to get yourself into the game, get involved, get in the flow of the game. Um, you know, sometimes it could be a scramble. He takes off and runs for first down. That gets you, gets you going, you know, like uh, use your basketball analogy again, but getting a rebound, you know, put back, that kind of thing where you're not having to, you know, shoot a 20-footer. So, um You'd have to ask Carson, you know, what, what his formula is. But um, for myself to answer that question, that's, that's the way I'd come at it. Mike, he's put game. together three straight pretty impressive games, but it seems like his touches are still limited. Uh, how do you get him more involved? With the I didn't hear her, yes. Uh, Josh Adams. Oh, Josh. How do you get him more involved? Yeah. We got to stay on the field, you know. We got to stay on the field. So uh, when you stay on the field, then we can call more than 12 runs. But, um, you know, we like the production we're getting out of Josh right now. The game last night, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, McVay admitted before that that, yeah, we, we pull stuff from Andy and things like that. And uh, I guess that goes on all over the league. But how much can be learned? And can you, can you guys learn from looking at other offenses around the league? Yeah, we study, we study everybody, just like, uh, you know, Sean's admitting to. I don't, I, don't um, I think everybody on everybody's staff is doing that, trying to pull, pull good ideas from other people. Mike, this unit isn't that far removed from looking like the offenses um, on, on Monday Night Football. I mean, when, when you look at that, can you see it? Can you see what's, you know? At times. Yeah, what's holding you guys back from, from being that? Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it's, you know, this is a, it's a simple question, but it's, a, it's probably a complicated answer because it's not just one thing. Um, it's not just one person. It's, it's all of us. And, um, you know, I said this last week. Um, we all have to do better, and um, that's down in and down out. And um, until that happens, uh, you know, we're, we're going to see inconsistency of performance. But when 
Um, you see when, when, we're, when we're really rolling, like, you know, we had one drive the other day. Um, we've been able to put two or three good drives together a game, um, but we haven't been able to sustain that consistency of performance. And um, we know that, you know, that's, that's what we're searching for and, and that's what we're working for, and we've got to get started on that today. You talk about staying on the field to get more running plays. But the first play of the game is a run. Next time you handed it off was the second quarter down 17 0. Could running the ball help you stay on the field? Um, it certainly could. I mean, if we're getting production out of it, absolutely. Um, but just handing the ball off isn't isn't the answer. We have to, again, we have to be assignment sound and and um, be targeted correctly. And, and we got to get production. We got to stay on schedule. And uh, you know, like you said, we we were three and out, three and out, and then seventeen nothing. And then we then we have a good drive, and um, we feel like we're we're gaining some momentum back in the game. Defense gets us a stop. We're we're driving again. We get to midfield. Feeling pretty good. Hey, look, if we score here, you know, we're, we're right back in this game. And then we stalled out and uh, we know the result, you know, how the rest of the game went. So um, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we know the formula for us is to be able to run the ball. And uh, that's helped us sustain drives and be able to, um, you know, have a lot of time of possession and, and get good production and be able to throw the ball down the field. So um, we're, we're very conscious of that. As a follow up to that, I know if you saw the Peter King story when he was in, the Saints meeting here the night before, but their game plan, it sounded like, was to get the ball in Carson's hands and have him throw it. Does that surprise you that the defense is, is trying to make your quarterback throw the ball to beat you? Uh, well, I can tell you this. We got a lot of confidence in, in Carson and his ability to throw the ball. That's probably a question better ask Sean Payton about. You've had uh, Golden now in the building for three weeks. Do you guys feel like you're any closer to figuring out how to use him and all the pieces together? Yeah, every day out there, you know, Definitely making progress, and I think he was more comfortable out there this week and than he was the week before. And and hopefully, uh, you know, come Sunday, um, we'll we'll be even further down that road. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks.